can take anime and motion clips created, whether it's through video recording or in motion capture suits, and apply it through the human IK to a skeleton. That human IK skeleton can be used to patrol and transfer that information to your own characters. And that will make character animation fun, interactive, and you'll have the ability to take this motion and apply it within your 3D applications or going to a game engine as well. So see this as a great way to transfer motion from one place to another for characters. The goal is to take this character's animation, which was created using video transferred onto a skeleton, and applying this animation to this character that has no animation on it. This will be done by associating that first character with animation to this character that doesn't have animation through the human IK. And to view skeletons, just as a reminder, if you go under shading, x-ray joint, you can see the skeleton structure of your character. And that's per viewport, shading, x-ray joint. The task is to relate this character to human IK and that first motion capture character to human IK and then we can transfer motion between characters, which saves you a lot of time with character animation. Let's get started by going back to the original character. This character and the other character, as long as they're associated with the human IK, and you'll find the shortcut to human IK as a tab off on this side. You could also find it under Windows, Animation Editors, Human IK. So either place, will get you here. And the goal is to associate this skeleton to the human IK and associate the other character skeleton to the human IK. And this way, we can transfer this motion to the other character. Also, what's very important, we're keeping the characters separate in scenes. This will wrap the character definition when we import this character into the next scene so there's no conflict with the names of skeletons and parts. To start, select Create Character Definition. This is a blank for a character and these bones have to be associated with this character. Let's start at the rootmost point right here at the hip. And you can see all the keys on the hip. In another video will go over cleaning up this information. Selecting the hip, right click here assign selected bone and that's all there is to this you select a part let me go right above the hip to this spine right click here assign selected bone move on up the chain now i don't see another spine piece here that's because that's because your skeleton's spine may vary. And so, if you click here, we can see here's the first segment to match here, and maybe your character doesn't have that many pieces. That's okay. When you run out of spine pieces, assign selected, we could go back to the main body definition. Here's the upper arm, but before you get to the upper arm, here's a clavicle. And I don't see that here. If you click left shoulder right here, here's your left shoulder joint. So selecting this one, right click, assign selected bone. And since the next part is the upper arm, this also will show that all this is symmetrical, meaning when I select this upper arm, right click, assign selected bone, it also does the same on the other side. So you only have to do this for half of the character. Assign selected, going to the wrist, assign selected. To get the fingers, you would rotate down, get a good angle at it, click the low triangle here and go through the parts. So here's the first bone on the thumb. Assign selected. And there's a second bone on the thumb. Assign selected. 
jump over to next finger, right click assign selected, top of the finger, and you'll continue doing this. Now, what if you made a bad assignment? Let's say I take this and I try assign it here again. You'll get an error and the bone turns red. And to undo this, right click on that red bone and select clear. Then you could still select this body part right here. Right click, assign selected bone. Click OK. So everything's done through a right click menu. We're almost done. Just a few more fingers and then we could go move on to the legs. And then we could test out this skeleton. So the hand's done. To get back to the main body, click here. Let's zoom on out. And we know when we're done when this turns green or sometimes yellow. As long as it's not red. Let's do the head before we move on further down. So this is the head bone right up here. Let's see if there's one for the neck. And you can see this itty bitty one right here. This could be the head or neck, depending upon how your character's rig was set up. You can open up in the outliner, holding down the shift key and clicking this plus, and you can expand and click on a bone, let's say this, and see what it's named. And it is named the neck here. So this one will be assigned to the neck. And the neck lives right under here, clicking this triangle. Right click, assign, select a bone going back up here. So you use the outline or the name given within the motion capture data when you're transferring it to figure out what parts what. And you could select this part by clicking here or within the outliner. And, and here's the head assigned to the head. Upper leg to upper leg. Lower leg to lower leg. Foot to foot. If your character has toes, which this one does have a toe base right here. Let's zoom on in, and there it is. Click this triangle, and you can assign a toe to it. Assign selected, like this. You can assign the toe base to it. And look at that, a green check. So this file is done. Make sure you save it. And before you experiment, save it again so you always could go back to the original. File, save as. And I'll just call this one. Knowing the original one, I could always open up again. You don't want to go through this process, even though it's less than seven minutes. This character is associated with the human IK. Once it's associated, besides being able to transfer motion from here to another character, and it already has motion on it, so that's our goal, to transfer this motion to another character. And see it's yellow now? Don't worry about that. Because that yellow exclamation point is just saying, you're not in a T-pose. Well, what we could do with this, this is where we'll transfer the motion, but we could also use something called the control rig. And the control rig is this inverse kinematic rig that goes on to your character and allows you to drag a joint chain to move the character. So if we want our character to shadow box, there we go, raise its hand, pick something up from the floor, maybe get on up again. Control rigs are very handy for animating characters because you're doing the inverse kinematic, selecting the childmost object and the rest will resolve itself, the rest of the joint chains. I'm going to go back to the main character source, none. Because we already have motion on this character. In order for the two skeletons to communicate, the one with motion capture data and this skeleton, human IK will be used as the go-between. We already set up the first skeleton with human IK. Same has to be done with this skeleton. 
shift click on the hierarchy plus sign and you can see the bone structures don't match that's okay because human IK will allow us to define a connection between those two create character definition let's start at the rootmost joint and move up the joint chain This will be the shoulder, so clicking on there, clicking on this triangle, right click assign shoulder. This will be the upper arm, so click out here, right click assign selected bone. Clicking on lower arm, right click assign selected bone. Clicking on this hand and right click assign selected bone to the fingers. Zooming on in. Selecting that finger, that bone, one, two. Remember the last character only had two bones here? This one has all three. So skeleton definitions can vary per character. How flexible that character is, how you decided to rig it up. Almost done with this. And you can see that the process is pretty easy. Just have to click, select, assign over and over again. And the hand is about to be done. Going back to the main skeleton. Selecting upper leg. Selecting lower leg. Selecting the foot. Selecting this little one way down here for the toe base. And that would have been easier to select here. Clicking this triangle, right click, assign toe base. And then all we have to do is deal with the neck and the head. This one is called the neck. Clicking here, right click, assign bone. This one is called the head. Jumping out here, right click, assign, select a bone, and we're done. Did that in three minutes or less. It's not a long process after you did it a few times. So what can we do? Let's save this file, and just like before, I'm going to save this file as a new name. So this way I don't ruin my three minutes worth of work case. Just like before. Now this character set my frames up, has no animation on it. Here's the character associated with Human IK. The goal is to use the motion capture character that was previously defined for Human IK and transfer that motion to this character. I'm going to import the, the motion capture character. And look, oh, it's smaller than the original character, but that doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. The human IK will project the motion onto our own character. All right. Well, we're really just one click away. And so this could be a very short video, but we'll do a few other things. So after we imported the character with the motion capture that we associated with the human IK right here, and this is our character on our current scene, I want these two to be connected. I'm going to select my character one from this menu. If I want to work with the focus in on the imported character, you would switch it up to here, but that's not what we're doing. We imported the motion captured character into this scene so we can transfer the motion. So this is the hierarchy. This character is the main character, the one in the scene, and the motion captured data character the one where we're just stripping away the motion applying here. So making sure it still says character one or wherever the character is called. Clicking under here and for the source of animation for character one, select the imported character, Deep Motion, which is the name of the file that I imported. And so go to source, making sure it says character one here and select Deep Motion Character One. And we're done. Just drag your timeline and look. Our character knows how to animate. 
Sure, are other characters in the scene, and we'll get rid of that character. You can select the mesh of that character and delete it, leaving just the skeleton be And no one will know because skeletons don't render. So you'll never see the bone structure, but still it's a little annoying to see that little bone structure under there. And we want this character to be independent of the motion capture data. We don't want it always to be connected to the source because you want to be able to build up this character's motion and correct the motion capture data as well, and then continue animating it. Transfer this motion onto our character so we can delete that imported character skeleton with the motion on it. Just click on this big button right here and select bake, bake to skeleton. And that's stating, take this source information and put it onto our character's skeleton. So click on this and just wait a moment. And that's all we have to do. You can see now the source says none. You could go here into the scene or up here and select that imported character and delete it and our character still has the motion.